Good morning, welcome to Abundant Life Church on this, the 9th of June 2024. Let us commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for this time that we have together. We pray your blessing upon us, Lord, and all that takes place here, in this place, in our hearts, our minds, our souls and spirit. We thank you, Father, that you are with us, you are watching over us, taking good care of us. And so we commit our time to you, Lord. Bless us, Lord, during this service and this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today is taken from Psalm 60. Psalm 60. You have rejected us, God, and burst upon us. You have been angry, now restore us. You have shaken the land and torn it open, mend its fractures, for it is quaking. You have shown your people desperate times. You have given us wine that makes us stagger. But for those who fear you, you have raised a banner to be unfurled against the bow. Save us and help us with your right hand, that those you love may be delivered. God has spoken from his sanctuary. In triumph he will parcel out Shechem and measure off the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is my helmet. Judah is my scepter. Moab is my wash basin, on Edom I toss my sandal. Over Philistia I shout in triumph. Who will bring me to the fortified city? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, God, you who have now rejected us and no longer go out with our armies? Give us aid against the enemy. For human help is worthless. With God we will gain the victory, and He will trample down our enemies. The Lord bless His word to us. Let us come before Him and worship Him. Come into His presence with thanksgiving.
worship God with our gifts and offerings to the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness, your care for us. And we want to bless you now, Lord, with our gifts and offerings. Continue to take good care of us, Lord. We thank you, Father. We want to bless your name. And we ask also, Lord, that you bless us in return because we are needful, Lord. We are weak and helpless compared to your majesty, your greatness, and all that you can do. Hallelujah. We commit our offering to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We have our prayer meeting on Wednesday at 8.30. Do join us as we seek the Lord together and receive His blessings upon our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome to each and every one again. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. God is a living God. And therefore, just like any living person, he communicates. He doesn't sit quietly there and uh, look, uh, you know, beautiful or great or mighty and majestic. But he communicates with his people, his children. And uh, throughout the Bible, God has used the prophets to speak to his people. Right? But when Jesus came, God spoke to us directly through Jesus Christ. And when Jesus ascended to heaven, He sent the Holy Spirit uh, to speak to us directly in our hearts, in our minds, our soul, our spirits. The Spirit of God Himself speaks to us. So we don't need prophets, huh? as in the Old Testament days because in the Old Testament days the people were only interested in their own interests they were distracted by the world that they lived in the society, the surroundings now, the accumulation of wealth properties, money that was all they were interested in they neglected God and therefore God sent problems uh, to turn them back to him right and they had enemies who attacked them they had all kinds of disasters uh, and when they turned to God God heard their prayer and delivered them but sometimes God had to give them an extended lesson uh, uh, in depending on him in trusting on him right so let's let's look at the book of Hebrews in the New Testament uh, Hebrews is after Timothy Thessalonians uh, uh, and so on <coughs> okay and uh, we'll read from uh, verse 1 verse 1 to 4 in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things and through whom He made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. Thank you for your word and we ask that you Feed us with your word. Give us understanding in our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our spirits even. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. Right? 
God spoke because he is a living God. Unlike the gods that are worshipped by people in this world who only have fixed texts of the past and maybe the uh, interpretations of men, we have the word of the living God that he has given and that he speaks through his spirit, his Holy Spirit to us today. God is still speaking because he is a living God. He is not a creation of man uh, that needs interpreting. God can speak to us directly. Nevertheless, you know, the fivefold ministry, apostles, prophets, uh, pastors, teachers, evangelists, God has given to his church to build up the church. Right? And so there are these functions to help the church to grow. Nevertheless, these help the church. These are not the foundation, the uh, pillars uh, that the church totally needs to depend on. Right? God can make us apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists when we are submitted to Him. Nevertheless, God used prophets in the Old Testament. Uh, partly because after uh, Moses, after yeah, after no, after Joshua, uh, you had Moses. Uh, then there's a generation of the Israelites who did not know God. In fact, Moses himself was not that familiar with God. That's why he had to ask God, "Who should I say?" sent me. <laughs> huh? What is your name? Huh? Moses himself did not know the name of God. <laughs> right? But he knew he was the God of their fathers. Right? So he had to tell them huh, the name of the God of the Israelites themselves. Huh? For hundreds of years, huh? for at least 400 years in Egypt, they were unfamiliar with God. Right? 400 years after uh, Joseph passed away, you know, you have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, or, uh, you know, then his son Joseph. Right? So after Joseph passed away, you had uh, all kinds of pharaohs, and, and the pharaohs that didn't know Joseph and what he did for Egypt uh, abused the Jews, the children of Israel. So they suffered. When they suffered, they cried out to God. So God sent Moses to bring them up out of Egypt. And that was just one instance. Uh. So in that sense, uh, Moses was a prophet because he represented God to his people. He told them what God wanted to say to them. And the people were afraid of God. God thundered. Uh, remember the Mount mountain uh, of God, Mount Sinai, God thundered, you know, there was lightning and thunder on the top of the mountain where God was, there was clouds, and this terrified the people, this spectacle of power and energy terrified them, so they said, okay, you go and talk to God and you tell us, <laughs> they were afraid, <clears throat> terrified, they'd never encountered such power and energy before and so they told Moses you go and talk to God and you tell us <laughs> huh? yeah, you tell us what he wants to say what, what he wants us to know right? but verse 2 in these last days he has spoken to us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe right there's a description of Jesus here. He is the Son of God. In these days, He has spoken to us by His Son, Jesus Christ, whom He has appointed heir of all things. Right? Father, Son. The heir is always the Son of the Father. He inherits all things. Right? And through whom He made the 
universe. Let's think about it. God always sits on his throne in heaven. He is a holy God. Holy, holy, holy. Right? And he cannot stand the sight of evil or sin. When Moses asked to see God, God told him, No one can see my face and live. Because God is holy. So Moses could not see God's face directly. If he saw God's face, God's eyes, he would be burnt up, consumed and destroyed. Because at that time, the blood of Jesus, Jesus had not been shed. Only the blood of animals. And even then, Moses was... Uh, maybe not, uh, he had not sacrificed uh, for sin offerings, for his own sin. In any case, he could not see God and live. Because God is powerful. Imagine lightning and thunder. Uh, we could not uh, uh, look, we cannot look at the sun uh, without damage to our eyes. Right? And how close can we get to the sun? Uh, I don't know how many million miles, you know. <laughs> Uh, we get to the sun and uh, our spacecraft would melt, disintegrate. It, all the radiation, uh, you know, the nuclear, the uh, electrons and photons and everything else uh, would penetrate the spacecraft and we would be fried. We'd be, be burnt up. We would be dead before we even get close to the sun. Because the sun is pure energy. Huh? Energy. And that is what God the Father is. He sits on his throne in heaven. He is holy. But the Son does everything that the Father tells him to do that the Father does. So Jesus is literally the hands and the feet of the Holy Father in heaven. Right? And he does all the things that God once done. So he created the universe. Right? God spoke in heaven and Jesus uh, was the hands in that sense uh, that caused everything to take place. You know, just as uh, when, when God wanted uh, to give drink and food to the children of Israel right he he told Moses you know strike the rock and then water flowed out right and it's uh, said uh, that Jesus is the rock that followed them through the wilderness uh, the physical presence of God that followed them uh, that was with them to protect them take care of them provide for them all the 40 years that they wandered through the wilderness till they got to the promised land. And even then, God provided all the produce of the land for them to eat, for them to consume. Right? At no time did they lack food. You know, at, uh, when they arrived in the promised land and they could pick, <coughs> they could When they could eat of the produce of the land, then the manna uh, and the water that God provided the, uh, stopped. Right? So there was no lack at any time. God was constantly with them and provided with them. Right? And He made the universe. Everything that we see. God made through His Son, Jesus. The Son is the radiance, verse 3. The Son is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of His being. 
The sun is the radiance. The sun reflects God's glory. Right? You know, we, we cannot see ultraviolet uh, radiation because it's uh, uh, the wavelengths are too short for us with our eyes to detect. Right? We cannot see infrared either. Right? We can feel infrared, we can feel heat. Right? But the wavelength of infrared and ultraviolet is beyond our uh, eyes to detect. We can detect only a narrow band of, of uh, light, of, of uh, energy. All right? And even our ears can only hear a limited bandwidth of sound. So we are limited in all these respects. But Jesus uh, reflects God's glory, God's power, God's energy. And He's the exact representation of His being. He reflects God perfectly. That's why Jesus said He doesn't do anything except what the Father does. Right? Everything that He does is a reflection of what the Father is doing, what the Father desires to take place that is jesus he is that in that sense the perfect mouthpiece of god he is the perfect prophet he is the perfect messenger of god because he is totally faithful everything that god wants us to know and hear jesus speaks direct to us and the greatest thing that he has done is in uh, he sustains all things by his powerful word right he sustains he enables everything to continue you know if god withdrew his power we would what would happen to us we would all die huh? We only live because God's power, God's energy is at work in us. What happens when a person dies? When a person dies, their body slowly cools down. Right? Energy stops being produced by their body. Everything just runs out. There is no longer a sustaining of life, a sustaining of heat. There's no sustaining of brain waves. Everything get, that can be measured in a, a person uh, to show that they're living stops. It's no longer sustained. It's no longer continued. So you can say that, uh, you know, the heartbeat stops, the brain waves diminish, the body temperature cools down. All those signs of life stop when a person is no longer living. And that also applies to the environment, to everything. Everything only continues as it does because it is sustained by God. Sustained by his powerful word. You know, when Jesus spoke the word to the storm, what happened? The storm <laughs> became still. Be still. And it was still. The waves, uh, the energy that was there in the storm, suddenly all calmed down. That is the power of God. You know, one, one great thing, um, Albert Einstein, huh? his theory of relativity. Why is it a theory? Because it cannot be absolutely proven without a shadow of doubt. Right? In many aspects, it can be proven, uh, but not 100%. Right? But Einstein's theory of relativity is energy equals to mass times the square of the speed of light 
right? Energy equals to mass or weight, huh? times the square of the speed of light. You know, energy, the whole energy that is in this universe, right, belongs to God. Uh, and it can be seen in His Son. His Son is like the mass because He sustains everything. And the light, the speed of light, you can say is like the Holy Spirit. You can't hold it down, it's energy, it is equal to the energy of God. Uh, the ma but Jesus holds the mass, God is in heaven, He is all energy. And the Holy Spirit is light. You cannot limit Him in any way. He, he is everywhere and in everything. He is all-powerful. So God uh, sustains everything by His powerful Word. In uh, John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The word, the word that sustains life and energy in this whole universe is in Jesus, in His Word, in the Word of God. After He had provided purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the Majesty in heaven. How did He provide purification for sins? By shedding His blood on the cross of Calvary. For all mankind, He was the perfect sacrifice for all mankind, for all eternity. Anyone who put their trust in Him, who believed in Him, is saved. Because our sins are forgiven through the blood of Jesus. So He provides purification for our sins. Otherwise, we could not go to heaven we would be stuck on this earth and be destroyed with this earth when it is destroyed. And after He provided purification for sins, right, He rose up and went back to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, of majesty, of greatness, of power in heaven. Right? And verse 4 says, So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. Jesus, because uh, of his of providing purification for our sins, <coughs> uh, and is seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven, so he has been given a name that is above all names. A name at which every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and confess that He is God, to the glory of God the Father, to the glory of the Almighty God. So He is superior, He is our Saviour. That's why we need to confess Him as Lord every day of our lives. You know. He provided purification. He provided it. It's just like you are provided electricity, you are provided water, but you have to turn on the water. You have to switch on the electricity. It doesn't work automatically. There has to be a turning on, a switching on. And so does the purification of our sins needs to be daily. We need to humble ourselves before God. Yes, He has saved us. His blood cleanses us from all sin. But we need to humble ourselves daily before God and ask Him for forgiveness. That's why Jesus, when He taught the Lord's Prayer, he's, part of it says, forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. The Lord's Prayer that we should recite every day in some measure. 
Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who who are our debtors. Right? So, we need to pray that every day. Huh? And as, our, as part of our relationship with God. Because He is Almighty. He is our Saviour. Hallelujah. Lord, we bow before you. We bow before your greatness, your majesty. You are greater than the storm. You are greater than the ocean, the tsunami. You are greater than the, the loudest thunder and lightning because you created them all. You have the power of a thousand lightnings and thunders. You have the power of a million earthquakes that have moved the mountains and created valleys and oceans. You are greater than all and we bow before you this day. We acknowledge your greatness, your majesty and we ask Lord hum, humbly as we come before you. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that your great power and majesty can work in our lives. Bring us healing, bring us forgiveness, bring us hope, bring us life. Thank you, Lord. We bow before you. Bless us this day, Lord, because we need you. We are incomplete without you, Lord. We need your cleansing. We need your blessing upon our lives. We bow before you. We acknowledge your greatness. Come into our lives this day, Lord, with your greatness. Touch us afresh. Fill our hearts, our minds. Enlarge our hearts, our minds to know you, to contain you, contain the knowledge of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us rise as we close the service. Father, we thank you that you are great and mighty in heaven and throughout this universe. And we pray for you to be great and mighty in our country, Malaysia. We commit ourselves to you, Lord, that you may bless this land through us, Lord. Through our prayers, our intercessions for this land, bless this land. We pray for our Prime Minister, Agong, we pray, Lord, for every state, Chief Minister, Mantri Basar, and every state assemblyman. We pray, Lord, that you would use them to bless Malaysia. We commit to you the Sumai Bakap uh, by election in Penang. We pray for you to bless the nomination day and the campaigning and the election day itself. Let there be peace, Lord, in Sungai Bakap. Let all the politicians who go there speak words of wisdom. Those who want to cause problems, silence them. Cause them not to be able to even go there to cause trouble. We pray for your peace to reign and rule in Malaysia. We pray also for your peace to reign and rule in each one of our lives. Give us your presence to heal us, to strengthen us, to encourage us, to lift us up. Watch over and take care of us, Lord, in this coming week, Lord. We give you thanks, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you.